Hi there and welcome to my channel. This is Kate in the Journal Nest in Australia and I'm delighted this morning to have you with me. I hope everything is going well for you and your worlds. I'm feeling a lot better this morning than I did yesterday. So in my happy place, we're going to do some slow stitching as part of Roxy Creations Journal of Stitchery. And I hope you've got whatever you're making close by and let's get started. So this is about sharing all our journeys as we follow the prompts. And I think this is prompt volume five, isn't it? That we're just finishing off. I'm a late starter, um, but I absolutely love these challenges. So we're going to start a new vessel today. And these are the stories that I've gathered around me in terms of colors. It's going to be quite different to my first one. So I thought though that I should actually share with you that this is virtually done now. This was my neutral nest that I've been sharing the progress on as I've been and oh I've got a thread there. Pull that through. Um, this was deliberately messy and feathery because I literally wanted to make a nest. So let's fill the nest up before we move on. It's always good to get that sense of um, finishing one thing. There's my pink cushion going into that. A little bit of lace and some of my other neutral tones that will now start living in this nest. Okay, so how about that? It's probably too big. I might have to make another neutral little um, pin cushion to plop in. So there we are. Let's put that there. So today's inspiration has come from my total enjoyment of making this needle book in, in the pinks and, and the reds and the French knots and all the fun that I'm having um, with these colours. And I did find this, you know, we're like bowerbirds, aren't we, some of us? Um, I was, I've been cleaning everything up and there's my crochet hook and there's a little pink pair of scissors. I think my mum may have passed them on as well. Okay, so that's, that's there. So I've been loving those colours. You know me and my love of sunflowers and yellow daisies and things like that. I've gathered these threads together. I found that when I was in Melbourne, I'd forgotten that I splurged. I think it's Morrison Sons. I'd never been to that. But this is beautiful silk um, thread, four ply. And I thought, wouldn't that be great to use? So that's going to be an inspiration. I've got a little bit of a napkin that I found. I've got some little cut out appliques here that will go through. But here's the big reveal. I found, uh, I've had this for a while, but this is an old tablecloth. And if I show you the grain, it is, I don't know whether that's linen or not, but it's just beautiful and soft. And so I've cut two circles for the bottom of my nest, and then we're going to do the sides. So here's the big da-da-da-da. When I made this one, I think I remember telling you I didn't put anything in between. So it's just um, the base fabric and then I double sided it. This one I felt, well, for my next colourful nest, I had said that I wanted some wool backing. So here we go. This is a big one. It's almost like I do it like my covered boxes. I did a small one and then a giant one. So I have cut out the, the tablecloth into a big long strip and I love that it's got squares here so this is a challenge for me I'm meaning to say I haven't done anything like this background before long strips and then squares again and I was going to cover it straight away but then I thought 
What about the idea if this is, let's mock it up and see what happens. I don't know whether I'll have a stripe or a, let's go a stripe for the moment. If I put this as the nest around it and still have these lovely, it's a, it's a naturally neutral um, blanket scrap that I got from the sewing basket. But what if I stayed sort of natural out here and then had all the color on the inside? So like here, I'll see the inside most often and so will you. Just a thought process at the moment, but that's, so I haven't rushed into covering this. Next time you see it, it might be all covered with a, a lining fabric, but it does mean that I can focus my attention on, see, that's what I might end up doing, not sure. Um, I can focus my attention on the base and this big snippet, if you like. So how are you going with your vessels or whatever part of the prompt you're up to? I hope you're enjoying it and stitching away with me. And if you're not stitching away, whatever you're doing, I hope you feel good today. So weekend is here. I've threaded up some this color is it a mustardy variegated one and let's start up here actually let's start a little bit further along because if that gets sewed in we won't see it so I'm thinking we might start with a Well, we, I could say we might start with a knot, which we will. Um, some sort of little design here with the contrasting thread to get Kate's creative mind going. Now I have had to empty up photos and apps again because my storage went wild yesterday. So if it ends abruptly, as always, and I don't say goodbye, you know that's not Kate, that's technology getting in the way. So I'm just doing some little running stitches and I'm trying to form a bit of a circle here. It's always hardest to get started. So yeah, have you used stripes or squares to define where your stitching goes? Probably many of you have. But for me, I've quite a new, well, I don't think I've done it like this, and especially one big piece. So I am planning to applique, and we'll do some of that thinking out loud together in a minute, but it's just getting the flow started enjoying it and I know many of you do this as well just sit down and breathe to get your session started I'm so grateful to all of you for spending time and watching me and especially those of you who've reached out and take the time to comment and give me feedback. It really is um, such a blessing and this community, I truly feel like um, I've, I've found a whole lot more friends. I say it often, but I have and my husband said to me, oh, Kate, okay, maybe in a few years you can just do some traveling and meet in central spots and have coffees and stitch and journal. And I said, wouldn't that be fantastic? But in the meantime, we're doing it this way. 
Yes, so thank you also for the comments to help me with my Etsy. I don't know what's going on. There's been no contact from them at all. And so I've decided I can't control that. So I'm just, just a bit sad. I don't know where my digitals are. what we call a, a rough circle, I would say. Using a long thread again, you know me. Now I'm getting impatient and doing quite a few st stitches on the needle as well. wondering what your plans are for the weekend if you're in the northern hemisphere it's probably getting hot and you may not be thinking of staying inside and stitching or you might be taking your stitching with you certainly here it's cold and rainy and perfect for stitching and pottering and I have made some progress on the house in terms of rearranging the room so I could have a neater sewing cupboard so in order to do that one thing I've moved three <laughs> I've interfered with three rooms but I am feeling good about it okay so let's now just zippy across here giant stitch there but okay so let's leave that hanging for a moment and start I wanted to show you some of the things that I've pulled out of my cupboard now you might be shocked um, because this is again things that I haven't looked at for years and years years and years I think this is a Japanese I think my daughter and I tried to do a course she was much better than me but rather than these bright colors on here I'm thinking oh I might use a combination of those so let's let's just I don't like that green you know me chop that away so who knows how this will turn out Again, I felt, even if I don't get finished, how many weeks have we got left on this challenge? Mm, two? I can't remember. Weeks are flying so fast. What are we doing here? We're just going to, as always, Kate's just going to have a little play and see what starts happening. I've got this very, very bright. This was a cushion cover that I found ages ago and thought I would never use those colours. I'm going to give some of this to Zoe and the girls at the Green Door actually this week because someone else might pretty bright isn't it might be too bright I'm just standing up so I can do this a bit faster so funny like it's all relative and so I was gonna say that used to be a very bright color for me but now it doesn't feel like it's strong enough this is another cushion cover that I just rescue and harvest the flowers off so those two look like they might belong this piece definitely 
some variegated crochet. I wouldn't mind having a little bit of my US Vintage or Red Flower there from a different piece. Mm, that's nice. That's off a, one of those cross stitch tablecloths. Look at those colours. Yep, that's feeling right. And then I put down some doilies and some daisies. Doilies and daisies, that's a good name. Sounds fun. And I've also used, I didn't share, I did use this around the edge. So I'm not going to go too far away from using a neutral to bind things together. Okay, so where did that all start out? Me saying I've got some thread here. What about that one? White background, but I could sew that. Okay. So we're on the journey, everyone. And who knows where this will end up. So. I'm liking the look of this piece. I like that. See, I can't go too far away from fraying. I've seen some incredible vessels. Congratulations, everyone. Like, and as always, immense gratitude to Rachel and Sarah. I mean, it is. I, I, I just can't believe how excited we all get. And I'm, I'm just so excited that I found the girls and their mum and that we're all in this fun, fun, challenging time. Okay, so garden, connect a flower with a flower. So let's start growing the garden and and see how far we get. All right, I need to turn it around this way. And so I'm just going to, I hope you can see this. Stitch down here. Then come up over here. And what do we feel like doing? Let's go whippy stitching. Let's see if I can do them smaller and neater than usual. Oh, look what I did. Sometimes that happens when you twirl it round. See, I can even tolerate this colour threader. So very bold colours for me, um, but it's always, I just went into, um, let's not forget that. Um, yeah, you just, do you love that feeling? You just sort of go hunting into your, um, I don't call it stash, I call it, <laughs> which it is really my stash, it's my treasures. Um, and on certain days, things just pop out. Like, I don't think I would have been doing it this colour yesterday. Oh, I was working on my pink needle book, that's right, that made me feel happy. And so I think because that helped, and bolder. My mum texted this morning and said she hoped I was making beautiful happy things so yes mum I am thinking of you.
sorry everyone lost in the flow there so having immense fun already with you and the stitching So one of the things that will happen is I'll get all sorts of funny things happening on the back if this becomes the nest. But actually you can't see it very much yet. And so I could cover them up or okay now I'm going to do just running around here. Keep that frayed edge showing. And I'm going to leave that open for a bit because we want to put something else on. Complimentary they are bought from completely different places and um, different materials but a bit of fun. I'm going to go over here, under, and I wanted to make that a little bit uneven so the the stripe is not on the stripe if you know what I mean just finish this thread I might do a little bit of embroidery or put another happy flower on let's see what where we get to So I'm interested, are you finished your first vessel or still on that one? I'm making multiples. I did see on Facebook that people are making whole collections. So it's been a, a great purposeful prompt, hasn't it? Here now. And I won't get it right across here, but the impact of this contrasting thread. Naughty, the faster I go, the bigger my stitches. Not that it worries me yet, but I just have to be patient. I'll see they're not showing through. I'm going to leave that hanging there. I know I don't like that, but and now we're going to just tear. She says, "This is what I do because I didn't know how long it would feel right for the um, that patch." that up a little okay and because I've got a pink needle here let's see I could 
could have done that earlier. I put it on, but I don't think like that. So I'm not going to do that bit. Could we start? I think we could. Having a little trail of garden. Oops. Let's anchor that one down. Yes, so I have a quiet weekend. I was just reminiscing that this time last week, I was just home from the airport, just home. That's amazing. So this is like a blanket stitch I'm doing. That was a big stitch. But it's just going to kind of blend the pressure with this hessian and go over the corner of that little patch underneath, make it much more interesting. should tell me where to go like not neatly around the flower it's going to go along there in a minute Is. It must be linen, I think. I'm not sure what tablecloths were made out of, but this is so beautiful to, and soft to sew on compared to when I was doing the other nest. Because when you mix your fabrics up, um, I mean, that's the fun of it, but it's not always easy to go through multiple layers. starting to think that I would like to do some embroidered flowers now so let's just bring this up here oh. see that's my naughtiness is starting to catch a bit the wool so I'll do one more too many but I think it's just chopped. Yeah. I'm going to call that accidental intentional gathering. <laughs> and where are we going to do our daisies? Up here. Do some big spooky ones first. And join this flower to this one.
Um, I've got lost in the flow again and forgetting to talk. for that is it's just so much fun <laughs> look at these giant flowers and let's come in closer here for our third one I was just thinking how exciting I've got all this material <laughs> to cover like the side of my big sewing basket and I can feel that this one might be a little addictive. Oh, and it needs another spoke. Because it just didn't look right. Too dare to look. Oh, look at those. Accidentally pretty. center there mm. three is enough and I'm just thinking we need a little bit of um, a little bit of stitching to want to go up this way so we're stitching to finish off the but also to do some contrast. We go down again. Come up again. So if nothing else, this is not your style at all. I'm just hoping that you're inspired to do your own stitching. Do you? And the shared outcome is that we just get to be inspired by each other to do the prompt and to get it finished or halfway done as I said this one I'm thinking I can have it with my pretty bright color threads and projects in it because it's going to be a big one and then if I'm bored or don't know how to start anything I can just jump in and to the nest and literally do what I'm doing now add a few rows at a time and it becomes a work in pro progress um, that evolves over time now we're nearly finished there's five rows here which makes me happy threes and fives And we'll round it up. Oh, what a miracle. It's, the camera's still filming. So let's do a recap. This is how far we've got this morning. Tablecloth, 
few little bits of stitching patch here, some flowers, and that's going to join onto a base. I don't know yet, which is, I'm thinking it might end up being a stripy base, but of course I'll put things all over it. I'm just going excited again. No, don't go too far. Will red work with this piece? Maybe if I cut all that white off. Okay, obviously to be continued. We'll see how much sharing of this piece gets done. But let's tidy our nest. I think that flower does need to go there. Um, threads away, needle book. There's my um, finished nest. And I'm going to say happy sewing, everyone. Until next time, it's Kate saying bye and thank you so much. Look, I can't stop. This is the bit I wanted. That bit. So I'll put it on there that, to remind me. I'm so buried. Okay, have a great day and um, happy sewing and making from me to you. Bye.